So for me, definite interest in that fight going to a decision. It's a flyweight fight. I think the books are kind of looking at Askarov having never been to a decision. It's a step up in competition here though. He's in the big league now. Marino's never been finished. Tough guy. Uh, yeah, I think there's some value there, guys, uh, for a fight at this weight class to be over three rounds, to be pick them to go to a decision. And it's not like either guy's got monstrous power standing. I don't see it. I I think there's value there. Um, obviously, it's at altitude, so bear that in mind. You, I mean, one of them could gas horribly, but I think Marino trains at altitude and... Askarov just strikes me as the kind of guy that's not going to slow down and their 125ers, it seems to affect them less. Um, something I didn't point out actually with Sergio Pettis is he fought Brandon Marino at altitude over five rounds um, and my memory says they were both fine cardio wise. So yeah, I mean I've picked Marino but I've gone with the, the underdog value at plus 150. But fight goes to a decision is definitely my area of interest there. I hadn't seen it before I actually done this podcast, so I'm going to go ahead and have a think about that. But that definitely seems of interest. Um, Co main is Alexa Grasso, Kyla Esparza. I, I think this fight is destined to end in a split decision, guys. The, the line is Grasso is a slight favourite, but you know, it's almost a pick 'em line, which I, I agree with. I'm going to pick Kyla here. I'm not confident in that pick, but. What we have seen from Grasso in the past is she struggled with wrestling. Um, Suarez, but I mean, she's a different level. But also the Randa Marcos fight. She won a split decision, but she was taken down a lot in that fight. We haven't, until the going into the Carolina fight, we hadn't really seen Grasso for two years for all intents and purposes because the Suarez fight was just, you know, over really quickly. She got taken down and submitted. We didn't get to see anything from her in that fight. So for me, going into the Carolina fight, we hadn't seen her for two years. She's 26 years of age. I was expecting improvements, or at least hoping for them, because she hadn't looked as good as I was expecting in the UFC. The Felice fight was real flat performance. She didn't wake up until round three. But she looked really good against Carolina. But Carolina does seem to be on a bit of a slide herself. So it's how much of that is Carolina sliding? How much is that Grasso improvement? Still question marks there for me. But I think she is a... A talent Grasso and surely she's been working the hell out of her takedown defence after the Marcos and Suarez fights but you know it's conjecture on my part I don't know that I can only go off what I've seen on tape and she struggled with resting Kyra Esparza has greatly improved her striking since being at Team Ayama if he said to me this fight is going to be on the feet for three rounds I, I definitely would favour Grasso but it's MMA Kyra will look for a takedown she's got decent takedowns can she keep Grasso down? I, you know, these are the unknowns with this fight. I don't think it's a fight you can really bet, to be honest. From how I bet, anyway, I think there's just unknowns. Especially if you're betting Grasso, you're relying on improvements that you haven't seen. Yeah, she looked better against Carolina, but it was a stand-up fight. Great stylistic fight for her. This is different. Kyla's going to be looking for the takedowns. And her stand-up, as I said, it has improved. So... <sighs> tough fight to call I'm going to go with Esparza just because she's got the plus number and we've seen Grasso struggle with the wrestling which Kyla has but I wouldn't be shocked if Grasso wins this and I, as I said at the start I think it's destined to be a split decision fight goes to a decision minus 3-3-3 three, three, three. Um, <laughs> look it's steep but I just don't see there being a finish in this fight but I still prefer the Sajara Betch fight going to a decision and that's that's minus 200 but I mean I just don't see a finish in this fight either so I'll go with Sparza. very tough fight to predict though next we've got the main event Jeremy Stevens, Yeah Rodriguez another fight tough to call can Jeremy Stevens cut the cage can he get to Yeah Rodriguez would his cardio hold up um, seems like he's flown it looked like he flew to Mexico right at the start of August um, then he went and trained with Tony Ferguson for a week or so then he was back in Mexico um, I saw on Instagram he missed his daughter's birthday so he's he's obviously hungry Jeremy doing all he can to get the win here he's actually gone favourite now first time I've seen him as the favourite in this fight 
Um, yeah, when I went back and watched the zombie fight, I was really surprised. I really thought Yeah was fought a, a lot more fleet-footed, but he stood in front of zombie a lot in that fight. Now, I don't know whether that was because he took it on very short notice and it was at altitude. I think it was in Denver, so I think that's about 5,000 feet altitude. And he just knew that he couldn't kind of dance around trying to play the in-and-out game for five rounds, so he took a gamble and... I mean, well, ultimately it paid off in the most extraordinary fashion because he was going to lose a decision there. And we've not seen him for a while either. I mean, to to go back and really see him, you've got to go back to the Caceres fight, and that's a just a completely different stylistic fight. You know, since then he's had the Edgar fight, which this isn't how this fight is going to play out. And then he had the... Um, uh, he had another fight as well, BJ Penn, but, I mean, you can't take anything from that version of BJ Penn. And, you know, the Korean Zombie is the, uh, the most similar fighter he's faced to Jeremy Stevens. But to take a fight on altitude against a zombie on two weeks' notice, you know, that's, that's a lot to ask. And I, I've got to believe that did affect kind of how he fought in terms of standing in front of Steve, uh, in front of the zombie a lot in that fight. So it's a hard one for me to call this one. I mean, Stevens, he done well against the beat, to be fair. Zabit had the grappling threat in his in his back pocket as well, which he used in round two. There's no grappling threat here from Yeah. I mean, even if Yeah hits a takedown or two, Stevens is getting straight back to his feet. Um, there's just Stevens hasn't got to worry about the grappling threat here. And when you look at Steve, I mean, you look at him historically, he's always struggled with rangy strikers. As Stevens, you've got the Zabit loss. Um, you've got the Canero loss. You've got the I mean, Max isn't really rangy, but you've got the Max Holloway loss there as well. Cub Swanson. You know, go back and even further, Cerrone and Pettis, but he's a different fighter these days. But Zabit did use takedowns. He won the second round with grappling. Canero mixed in takedowns as well. Um, Max Holloway even mixed in takedowns in that fight. Um, that fight was pretty close on the feet. Max was winning it, but there wasn't much in it on the feet. And yeah, he, he ended up going to his grappling in that fight. You know, Charles Oliveira used the grappling. Frankie Edgar used grappling. Um, yeah, Cubs once an outstruck, and that's over five rounds. But it's back in 2014. I think Stevens is a best, better fighter now than he was then. Um, Jose Aldo, that was a stand-up fight. He lost there on the body shot after seeming like he had Aldo hurt. So... You know, there's no grappling threat here from Yeri. He's going to get the striking fight he wants. It's just can he, can he get, can he chase Yeri down? I, I'm leaning Stevens here. I'm not entirely confident though because I don't feel like we've seen Yeri really. You know, obviously we saw him against Zombie, but as I said, short notice. It's nearly a year ago as well. He's only 26. There's improvements. You know, the Frank Yeager and BJ Penn fights are just nothing fights. I, You know, for me, seeing him actually in a fight that he's taken with a proper camp in a fight that's gone, kind of how he'd want it to go in the sense that he's got a, a, a decent opponent in front of him. You're going back to the Caceres fight, which is over three years ago. So I just don't know how good he is, he is now, how much he's improved. And the zombie fight... It's just hard for me to take a lot from that fight because of the altitude and short notice. I just don't believe he's just going to stand there in front of Stevens like he did Zombie. If he does, uh, Stevens all day for me. But this is a five-round fight, and yeah, he's a you know he's quite a low percentage fighter in terms of the the, the stuff that he, he risks. Stevens is tough as hell. How Stevens going to hold up over the five rounds? I've, I've got a feeling his cardio is going to be okay. Um, I'm leaning Stevens, but I'm not confident. I'm not confident at all. I just don't feel like I've got a full read on where he's at, where his game's at. He's at a full camp now. We've not seen him again for a year. But I've I've just got to go with the fundamentals of Jeremy here. But he needs to have he needs to show he can cut the cage and not just be chasing after a year. But he had some success against Zabit. Zabit slowed down. He won round three. He was doing all right on the feet with Zabit in round two. And, uh, but then he ultimately got grappled and lost a round. And I think Zabit's better than Yeah. Um and he's and as I said, Zabit had that grappling threat. So I'm gonna go Stevens here. He's flipped to the favourite now. I definitely liked him with a plus number on his name. I, I don't know if that's gonna I can see that line flipping back and forth. 
and I don't see anyone being a wider favourite than than they are now. I think it stays in that territory. But I lean I lean Stevens, but not confident. So that breaks down this card, guys. As I said at the start, if you want to jump on board live betting, two hundred pounds for the year, bargain, absolute bargain. You're going to make that back over one or two shows, unless your unit sizes are on a less than fifty dollars. Then maybe it might take you a bit longer, but you're still going to make profit. As I said, it's I I think it's a profitable service for anyone, even if your unit sizes are as low as five dollars. Um, you're going to make the two hundred back over the year and and make profit on top of that. Um, but yeah, generally you probably want to be doing you know at least twenty a unit really to take home a, a tidy sum of profit from the live betting over the year. Um, pre bets with members, as I said, the open parlay was Michael Hunter who cashed. The second leg's been sent out to members, and I'm actually going to go away and have a think about the um, Askarov fight going to a decision because the flyweight fight going to a decision that surprises me at even money. But good luck with your bets, guys. Good luck with your picks, and I'll be back next week for UFC Copenhagen.